A way to go back to the old color scheme. One less button needed to edit. And did vertical audio finally get fixed? Hmm. What's going on, guys? This is the Motivation Guy. Yes, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hey, I want to encourage you guys not only to be great in this game, but to also be great in life. I don't know what's been holding you back, but it's time to burst through that and do things that you've never done before. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram, where I'm posting up vids to inspire you to be the best version of yourself. So today, we're going to be talking about a few important settings that you should consider changing for Chapter 2. With the new season, a lot of you guys also had your settings reset because of a bug on Epic's end. Ooh. And so you'll need to reset them all anyways. But other than your old keybinds and graphic options, here are some important tweaks and settings you need to check out. But before we get into that, if you guys are interested in getting better at Fortnite, which it should be everyone who's watching, then click the link below to go to ProGuys.com where you can play with the best players in the entire world by just clicking a button. Sign up for our membership at ProGuys and you're going to get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So, if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuys.com. Also, be sure to drop a like on this video, guys. You got to show your love and support. We strive to bring you guys the best content available. All right, with that being said, it's time to sit back, relax, and get my favorite candy, that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. So, let's start by talking about the new confirm edit on release setting. When enabled, it makes it so you can confirm edits by simply letting go of the trigger. You start the edit normally and punch out the pieces. When you're ready to confirm it, just let go of your left click or trigger button and the edit will confirm. It can take some time getting used to, but once you've played around with it enough and you get used to it, the setting can really increase the speed of your editing. To turn it on, navigate to your game settings, scroll down to control options, and turn on confirm edit on release. Okay, so having the setting on won't even prevent you from editing like before. As long as you don't let go of left click, you can still confirm your edit the old fashioned way. Doing that is actually still pretty useful in some scenarios. One of which, for example, is when you're trying to turbo build right after editing. Like that move Mongro and other pro players do all the time, where they take a wall, edit it, and build a ramp immediately. You wouldn't want to let go of left click while doing that since you'll need to press it again to build anyways. And that would just slow things down. So in that scenario, the old method of you know editing is actually faster, which again can still be done even with the setting turned on. But for most other normal editing scenarios, like when you're just trying to edit a wall and pull your gun out, this new setting will help speed things up. It'll allow you to keep your fingers on more important keys as well, reducing the chances your finger will slip and hit the wrong button. All you keyboard and mouse players out there, come on, make some noise, make some noise. I see you. You can also still use scroll wheel resets with this option, which if you need a reminder of how to set it up after all your settings got wiped out, don't even worry about it, all right? Navigate to your input settings, then set the secondary binds for building edit and reset building edit to one of the directions on your scroll wheel. As we said, you know, it's going to take a while to get used to this new editing option. So we highly recommend loading up creative and running through an edit course a few times just to get the hang of things, you know, of confirming on release. Just look at Mongro cranking out edits and creative with this new setting, my goodness. I know he was fast before, but holy moly. It's crazy to think how fast this guy is going to get once he's really used to it. Next is the new 3D headphones audio option. Epic has been working on implementing this for a few seasons now, thank God. And it's finally here. This setting makes directional sound effects more distinct, helping you to pinpoint the location of players and objects. So to turn it on, head to your audio settings, then look for 3D headphones and switch it on. The setting is called 3D headphones, so I know it's probably self-explanatory, but make sure you guys have headphones plugged in while you're using this, or else you won't notice all the benefits, I'm telling you. But I mean, really, you should be gaming with headphones anyways. They're just so superior to speakers. <laughs> Come on now, you already know that. When it comes to hearing footsteps, especially, so that shouldn't be a problem, right? I, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but do you guys game with speakers or headphones? Tell us in the comments. I'm actually curious. But back to the setting, Epic even made a new video showcasing it, along with the comparison of it being on and off, so you gotta check it out. It's subtle, but you could definitely tell the difference. The footsteps sound a lot more like they're above us when it's turned on. This right here is Epic's fix for the game sound problems. It's not perfect or anything like that, but it's definitely an improvement. So give it a try if you haven't already. It might be a little weird at first, getting used to the new sounds and all, but for instance, chest sound a bit different after you switched it on. It's kind of freaky at first, to be real. <laughs> Almost like the volume is lower or something. But as you get used to it, you can actually start telling whether something's really above you or below you pretty easily. 
I know before this setting existed, I used to have serious issues telling where a chest was located, and I'm sure most of us have also felt that embarrassment before. So to ensure this setting is working as intended, make sure that you turn off any other virtual surround sound you might have enabled, okay? Like if it came with your headset or you have it on in the Windows sound settings, regular stereo headphones without any fancy settings are all you need. Having anything else on with this setting might just end up making the audio worse. So definitely make sure anything extra is turned off or else the game might not sound right. I'm sure you guys have noticed how the game looks a lot different this chapter, man. There are loads of things Epic did to help give it a new look. Different textures, darker night times, and a bunch of new lighting effects, all, you know, which look pretty good. But if you're not a huge fan of the way things look now, don't worry, my friends. There's a setting that we can change that'll make the colors look a bit more like they used to, unfortunately. <clears throat> Sorry, this is kind of awkward. This option is only available for PC users since it's a game file we're configuring and not an actual in-game setting. I apologize, console and uh, mobile players. Don't be mad at Keith Allen, though. All right, this is not my fault. There's just no way to change it in those systems. So, if you play on PC and prefer the game's old look, start by searching App Data in Windows and opening the folder. Go back a step in the folder to get to App Data, then go into the local folder. Navigate to Fortnite Game, the Save folder, the Config folder, then to the Windows Client folder. In here, look for the Game User Settings file and open it with Notepad. Press Ctrl and F to search for Display Gamma, one word. The new default value is 2.2, but by changing it to 1.0, we can get the old color settings back. Once you're done, save the config file and close Notepad. Right click on the file, go to Properties, and make sure to check the Read Only box. This will stop Fortnite from overriding your custom setting anytime you open the game. Just check out these before and after screenshots at JFree on Twitter. The difference is subtle, but you can tell the colors look more vibrant with the gamma set to 1.0. You can especially notice it on the character and ground textures. This setting can actually give you guys the edge as the higher contrast potentially makes spotting players so much easier. And if you just wanted to get back to something you're just used to, give it a shot and just see how things feel. By the way, shout out to Jay Free as he's the one that shared this setting tip in the first place. Big thanks to him. One final note, do not mess with anything else. Do not mess with anything else in this config file or you're going to mess things up in your game, man. Make sure to only touch the display gamma option since we know that's safe to do. If at any point you want to revert this setting, you can always go back and do it manually by changing the default to 2.2 or you can uncheck the read only property. Then once you launch the game, the setting should override back to the default. With the new season in Battle Pass, we're also getting a bunch of pop-ups on our screen during every single match. Normally, they're not too bad, but sometimes they can get a bit overwhelming. Do you agree? My goodness, like, I don't know about you guys, but I prefer if they didn't put a distractingly loud chime every single time I reach the top 25. Okay, I get it, Epic. I get it. I really do. Not everybody likes these, especially players trying to focus on their gameplay. And although it'd be nice if we had an option to turn off all the new pop-ups and punch card, it doesn't look like there is one, sadly. Hmm. The only thing that even comes close is a HUD setting, which is only accessible while you're loaded into a game. That's right, there's a secret settings tab that you can only access while in-game for some reason. While it's not really a secret, but a lot of people forget that it's there. Anyways, load into any game or creative, right? And then go to your game settings, the one with the cogwheel. Click the HUD tab inside here and turn off quest progress. While you're here, if you still need to turn on the setting to show your ping and network stats, just turn on net debug stats. These settings did get reset along with everything else at the start of the season for a lot of us, so just a quick reminder in case you forgot about it. Some users on Reddit were saying it helped them remove the medals that pop up on the left side. We first saw this setting posted on the day the season dropped. Then it got reposted with a ton of upvotes as a solution to get rid of the new badge pop-ups. A bunch of people were saying it worked for them, but in our testing, all it did was disable the old challenge progress pop-ups. That's still fine, those are good to disable if you don't care about challenges at all, and I know a lot of competitive players don't care one bit, so at least we can get rid of some of the clutter. So to clarify all the confusion, an Epic Games employee dropped a couple of comments saying that the punch card staying on the screen for the entire match is a known issue and we're working on fixing. He also said, we do have the option to turn off quest progress, but this may not affect all of the new punch card visuals and audio and they sent this feedback to their team. So there you have it straight from Epic and they really sound like that. 
This quest progress setting is only for the old challenge pop-ups, but it's great to hear that at least they are aware of how annoying some of the players are finding these new pop-ups. Hopefully, we get an option to disable them in the next patch. Please help me. Okay, lastly, let's talk about the HUD real quick. The new UI this chapter did move our health bar and ammo counter to two different spots now. It's a bit confusing considering we were so used to looking down at the center of our screens for that info. Sadly, there aren't any serious HUD customization options, at least on PC and console. The only thing we have that can even come close to moving our health bar back toward the center is the HUD skill setting. To get there, go to your game settings and scroll down until you find the slider. The default is one, but if you want to shrink down some of the screen elements and move your health a bit closer to the center of your screen, we recommend lowering this to anywhere between 0.6 and 0.9. Anything below 0.6 really gets small and unreadable, and anything above 1.0 is just too big and cluttered. For us, on a 24-inch monitor, 0.7 is a nice sweet spot. Really what you choose here is completely your preference, okay? The display you use and how far you sit from it all come into consideration. So if you find the game looks better at the default, you can keep it that way, no problem. But reducing the HUD size can help remove some of the clutter and allow you to focus harder on what's happening in the game. It also moves the health bar a bit closer to the center of your screen, which helps a lot of us that are still looking down there all the time. Tweaks, the most impactful ones you need to make sure to check out are the 3D headphones and confirming edits on release. The other ones are more preference-based, but don't hesitate to mess around with them as well, you know? You might just end up enjoying the changes. Once again, this is the motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. I'm your number one fan. I'm cheering for you not only to be great in this game, but also in life. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to like this video if we helped you with your settings. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of all of our upcoming Chapter 2 videos. All right, guys, we'll see you later.